Welcome to Unit 12, Video 2, Balancing Equations. By the end of this video, you should understand why it is necessary to balance equations, you should be able to write balanced chemical equations, and you should understand what is meant by the coefficients in a balanced equation. A balanced equation is an equation where each side of the equation has the same number of atoms of each element. We need to do this in order to obey the law of conservation of mass. Recall that the law of conservation of mass tells us that mass can be neither created nor destroyed. Therefore, our equations must represent this fact by having the same number of atoms of each element on both sides, so no atoms have been created or destroyed. To balance an equation, we start by writing the skeleton equation. This is the formula equation we learned about in the last video that is unbalanced. Then we add coefficients to equalize the atoms of each element on both sides. A coefficient is a whole number in front of a formula in a balanced equation. This whole number uh, applies to the entire formula. So if I have two H2Os, that means I have two water molecules. In, uh, in total, four hydrogens and two oxygens. I recommend that you start by tallying up the atoms of reactants and products. So let's look at this example. Here we're balancing the equation magnesium plus oxygen yields magnesium oxide. As written, we have one atom of magnesium and one molecule of oxygen. Recall that oxygen is diatomic, so each molecule contains two oxygen atoms. And that yields one molecule of magnesium oxide, containing a magnesium atom and an oxygen atom. Notice here that we have more oxygens on the left than we do on the right. This is an unbalanced equation. It implies that we have destroyed an oxygen. But this isn't the case so we need to balance the equation. So I'm going to start by adding up my atoms of magnesium. I have one on each side, so that's already balanced. But I have two oxygens, as we said, on the left and one on the right, so that needs to be fixed. I need to then add another MgO on the right-hand side of the equation. I represent this using the coefficient 2. Notice I can't add just an oxygen. I have to add the entire substance. So I now have two magnesium oxide molecules. Now I have two magnesiums on my product side and two oxygens. So notice in fixing the oxygens, I've actually messed up my magnesiums. This is an easy fix, though. I can just add a second magnesium on the reactant side. And that gives me a two coefficient in front of magnesium. I now have two magnesiums. I now have two of everything on each side and my equation is balanced. It now reads two magnesiums plus one oxygen yields two magnesium oxides. Here's another example. Hydrogen plus oxygen yields water. I have two hydrogens on each side and I have two oxygens on my reactants and one in the products. Therefore, I need to fix my oxygens. I'll start by adding a coefficient to water. I now have two water molecules. Retallying, I now have four hydrogens on the right and two oxygens on the right. So again, I fixed my oxygens but messed up my hydrogens. So I'm going to add more coefficients. If I double my hydrogens on the reactant side, I now have four hydrogens on both sides and two oxygens on both sides. This equation is balanced, and it now reads two hydrogens plus one oxygen yields two H2Os. Here's a whole bunch to try on your own. Let's do the first together, and then you can pause the video and try some on your own. I'm going to start by tallying my reactants and products. On my reactant side, I have two nitrogens, and on my product side, I have one. On my reactant side, I have two hydrogens, and on my product side, I have three. The easiest thing to fix here is my nitrogens, so I'm going to start with that. 
I'm going to add a coefficient of 2 in front of NH3. This now gives me 2 nitrogens, but 6 hydrogens. 3 times 2 is 6. Now I need to fix my hydrogens. I'm going to do that by adding a coefficient of 3 in front of H2, giving me 6 hydrogens, and this equation is now balanced. Pause the video here and try some or all of the rest on your own. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice the very last one was actually written balanced already. You didn't need to add any coefficients. So what does a balanced equation tell us? Well, we can read the coefficients in a balanced equation in two ways. First, as number of atoms and molecules. So for example, this balanced equation tells us that we need two atoms of sodium and one molecule of chlorine to yield two formula units of NaCl. Or, more commonly, we'll read them as moles. Since we never work on the scale of individual atoms or molecules, we'll always be working on the scale of many millions and billions of atoms and molecules. So we'll use the quantity of moles to represent this in this class. So I can read this equation as we need one mole of silicon dioxide plus four moles of hydrogen fluoride to yield one mole of silicon tetrafluoride plus two moles of H2O or water. Notice that these coefficients indicate the ratios in which these things combine. Looking at the example at the top, we see that for every two sodiums and one Cl2, we get two NaCl's. We can think of balanced equations somewhat like recipes. They basically tell us the ratio in which we must combine things. In other words, if you look in a cookbook for a recipe for baking a cake, it wouldn't just tell you to add flour, sugar, eggs, and milk and mix it up and bake it. It would tell you to add, say, two cups of flour, one cup of sugar, one cup of milk. It would give you quantities and tell you how many cakes that would yield. Same here. So in other words, we can think of these equations as telling us that for every two atoms of sodium and one molecule of chlorine, we get two formula units of NaCl. Or, for every one mole of silicon dioxide and four moles of hydrogen fluoride, we get one mole of silicon tetrafluoride and two moles of water. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at why it's necessary to balance equations in order to obey the law of conservation of mass. Then, we looked at how to balance chemical equations by adding coefficients and tallying up the atoms on each side. And then we looked at what is meant by the coefficients in a balanced equation. Recall that they tell us the ratio in which the atoms combine or the ratio of moles of atoms.